off because she was very old, you know. And a lot of the kids in my class didn't behave even when there was someone watching, so the fact that there was lots of people was, was a field day. All right, and there we go, and it looks different. Let me re revisit what we did, and then I'll explain it in more detail. First thing I did is I created my CSS file, and we'll look at this in more detail in a second. I then went in, and I put that, a link to it, a different kind of link. It's not a link like you click on it and go to that file. This essentially is wiring those two files together. href, just like with regular links, indicates the, the name of the file. rel equals style sheet, of the sheet. I'm letting it know that this is a style sheet. And I'm actually letting it know two different ways that it's a style sheet. All right. It would depend on the browser, it would be my guess. It would, be depend, it would depend on, on, on the browser. Um, so I'm going to go and paste this on all of my pages. Now, why do you suppose I created a separate file for my CSS? I actually could have created it in the same file as the HTML, but I decided not to do that. Why do you suppose that is? to be organized. And what will org being organized help me to do? Make changes later. Make changes later, right. I tell people in my class that if I ask a question and you don't know the answer, just say maintainability to make it easier to change. Because that's the reason why we do almost everything in software development. Why do we indent? Well, to make it easier to read so that we can change it easier. Why do we put it in separate files? To make it easier to change it. So I have my website here that is now a completely yellow website. So I'll open up my home page here. And I click to page one, page two. They're all yellow with blue font. What if I decide I don't like that? Maybe I want to have a white background with red text. I change that in one place in the CSS file. Now every page on my site gets that change. So that just makes your life easy. So in other words, if someone were to come in, let's say you were developing a project for someone, and you created a website that consisted of, you know, 25 pages. If someone came in and said, you know, that's a great job on that, except I don't like the font. I want Helvetica, because I saw that movie and I loved it. And I want, I want the red to be like a darker shade of red. All right. You don't have to go back and make 25 different changes. If all your pages are pointing to the same style sheet file, you just need to change that one file, and everyone gets that change. All right, which is really a big plus uh, as far as maintaining your code. Now. What colors does HTML recognize? Well, most of the big ones that you think of, red, blue, green, yellow, and all that. You can refer to colors by name. Let's Google it and see what we get if we Google HTML color names. And there's a list of them. Alice Blue, Antique White, Aqua, Aquamarine, Azure, Beige, Bisque, and so on down the line. That's a lot of colors. But there's more colors than that, you know, that people can detect. So how do you get a custom color? You get a custom color by not using the name of the color, but by using what's called the hex code. All right? 
And if anyone is interested, I could go over with you individually how this works. But for our class, it's enough just to know that you can find a whole slew of color codes. Oops, let's find another one. All right, going down the line. It's almost like, like the, the paint swatches, right? You go and you look and you say, gee, I like this slate blue. So I'm going to use that color code instead of the name. Because the name slate blue won't work. But if I go in here and say color, and I put in that, that's called a hex code for hexadecimal. I can go in here and now my, my font is that color. There's actually tools available. If you're not confident in picking colors that match, all right, there's actually tools that help you pick colors that match. So we could go to, let's go to here, back to Google. That's the one I like. Oddly enough, it's a little hard to read on the screen, but you can, essentially, you can pick like what shade you want. Like, let's say I want my site to be primarily green. I can slide it around to say, do I want a darker green? or a bluish green, or a yellowish green, and any points in between. Let's say I decide I want a bluish green. All right. There's actually more themes that I can pick. I can pick complementary that gives me these sort of complementary shades that go with it. But I'm going to stick uh, with the simple and, and go for monochromatic. So every, every color it picks is a shade of green. I can then go and click on color list, and it gives me the code for those five colors. So maybe I could do something like this, whereas maybe I make the background of my page this, and the color of the text, we'll try this. better than the plain one, and if I were to pick colors, I may not get them where they'd match. And there's, there's actually a science to picking colors that are that, that go together well. All right. Is there a special place within the W3 school's site that, that explains the uh, syntax? And, and of the hex code? I believe there would be. Not, not just the hex code, but the, the syntax required for making the style sheet file. The CSS? Yeah. Yeah, there is a section on CSS. My aim here is to go over like the high points and even, you know, I'll give you these example uh, pages to like play with, you know, because I don't, you know, this isn't an HTML class. And then anything you want to do beyond that, you're welcome to research and I'd encourage you to do so, to, to go beyond the stuff that I've covered in class. Let's spend a minute though looking at and dissecting this CSS file. This might be kind of where your question was headed. What does that mean? All right. CSS files are comprised of a series of style rules. This is one style rule. All right. Each style rule has two parts. This part is called the selector, and then this part is called the list of attributes. The way this works is that 
The selector identifies what on the page gets this style rule. Now in this case, I said body. What's the body of the page? It's pretty much the whole page. So pretty much the whole page gets it. The only exception uh, in this case is the links. The links are handled differently. So the whole body other than the links gets this. So that's the selector. Now, the background, the, the attributes look like this. They're enclosed in these curly brackets or braces. They consist of a name of an attribute, a colon, a value for the attribute, then a semicolon. Then the name of the attribute, colon, value for the attribute, semicolon. And I can have as many of these things as I want. And almost anything that you can think of visually, there is an attribute for. So if I want to make the text bigger, if I want to make the text smaller, if I want to make uh, the text a different font, all these things I can do via the attributes. Now, this doesn't look bad, all right, but maybe I want to do something like maybe I want this header to be a different color because everything on the page shares the same color scheme. Maybe I want to make the text white in the header. I could do this, header, color, white. Then if I look at it, the stuff that was in the header gets the white, everything else gets that green. So again, what do I have? I have a selector. The selector specifies what gets that style rule. What does the style rule say? Well, it says make the color of the text white. What did it do with the background? It didn't do anything with it. It has the same background as the body. Why? because I didn't specify a background color for the header. Therefore, this is sort of where the cascading part of the term cascading style sheets comes from. The body's background colors kind of cascades down to cover the header as well. So because I didn't define a background color for this, it guess this is the background color of the body. Because really, if we look at the code, The header is part of the body, all right? Before we had a style rule for the header, it got the same style rule as the body because it's part of the body, but we can then go and customize portions of the page that way. Now, Important thing, because we've separated the CSS and HTML, every page gets that style rule, gets those style rules. So as we go from page to page, every one of them has that style rule. One thing I want to ask about this color scheme designer, it only gives us five colors. What if we want more? It's a bit of a trick question. You probably don't want more. All right? Why? Because if you start throwing in too many colors in it, it becomes um, it becomes you know a distraction if it's too colorful. If there's too much going on in it. Remember that we use colors for a couple reasons. We use colors first of all. For one reason, to make it look good, look attractive, and to set a mood. Like I said before, if you did a, a website for Barbie that was in black and silver, that wouldn't be very effective. That wouldn't match the mood of the people going to it. So that's one of the reasons you do it. Another reason you do it is to set some things off, to set things aside, so that visually people know right at a glance that this is my navigation, this is a heading. 
sort of like we did here. The fact that this has white text as opposed to that shade of green text sets it off. It makes it look more important. All right? If we start putting too many colors in, then the user becomes distracted and doesn't know what to focus on or not focus on. All right? So chances are you probably don't want more than five colors. If you do, you can always go to white, black, and shades of gray, neutral colors that don't really matter. All right? We have a little bit more to do with this. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about typography on Monday. Thank you. I forgot what day it was. Uh, we'll uh, talk about that on Monday, and then we'll get into animation. I do aim, I'm going to put these examples up there, so at the very least, you have a good starting point for your project and, and the, the web pages that it's going to include. All right. We'll see you later.